And joining me now is one of the country's senior most, most eminent journalists. I'm joined by N. Ram, the uh, director at the Hindu Group of Publishing and also, of course, the former editor-in-chief of the Hindu newspaper. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Ram. How do you see the events that have taken place today? Raids being carried out across 100 locations, several journalists being detained, accusations being made that the news click web portal is linked to Chinese funding. How do you see this? Do you see this as an attack on the freedom of the press or as the government claims that they are trying to defend sovereignty against those who are anti-India? This is uh, an outrageous attack, a military style swoop on freedom of the press. Of course, news click has been targeted and uh, there's been a McCarthyite campaign, largely based on lies, uh, triggered perhaps by the uh, New York Times uh, piece that appeared some time ago. And it's important to note that nowhere, while well, the New York Times piece has a particular ideological slant, nowhere does it accuse news clip of any uh, wrongdoing by the law, uh, you know, anything illegal. Uh, there are two references there, two lazy references, Mm -hmm. And this I think, has given fresh life to the vendetta uh, that we saw before from 19 to, uh, from 2021 against uh, NewsClick, a small but uh, focused digital venture, which uh, uh, which I think acquitted itself very well during the farmers' protest, and uh, it has taken up issues that uh, you know it's a progressive uh, uh, a progressive uh, uh, offering. Uh, it's a not profit. It's not a not profit, but pro profit is not its motivation. This is uh, some and substance of what NewsClick is, and they have targeted it, uh, perhaps to send a message, a wider message. Of course, to still this voice, but mm -hmm. also to send a message to the press. And this is really an attack on uh, freedom of the press. And this, I, I have seen many laws before. You're calling it an attack on the freedom of the press. The government, the, the government I might add, Mr. Ram, Albert, without a, a official statement here, but based on sources is claiming that the investigation carried out over the last few years by the Enforcement Directorate, which had put in charges against Prevention of Money Laundering Act, claims that directors at NewsClick like Prabir Purkayast had received money from Neville Roy Singham, who they claim is a U.S. citizen but reportedly affiliated to the Communist Party of China and was therefore being used to carry anti-Modi uh, pro-China pieces. How do you see this? Do you believe that this is all a red herring, this Chinese, uh, you know, this endless search for an enemy figure? Is, do you believe that the Modi government is, is guilty of that? Uh, or do you believe that this is exactly how governments operate, not just in the center, but in states, that anyone who has a dissenting voice has to be stilled using the, the force of the law? In this case, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, anti-terror law uh, is reportedly being used. Yes, I think uh, this is what I mean by a McCarthyite campaign, full of lies, because nowhere does the, in fact, the, no Chinese ma money is mentioned at all in the New York Times piece. I have it here. It's called a global web of Chinese propaganda leads to a U.S. tech mogul published on August 5th this year, updated on August 10th. Nowhere does it say that. And there are two references. I, I, I've taken them out. One is the authorities in India raided a news organization tied to Mr. Singham during a crackdown on the press. Not that, crackdown on the press, accusing it of having ties to the Chinese government, but offering no proof. Secondly, the second reference in the story is, quote, the Times investigate uh, in New Delhi, corporate filing show Mr. Singham's network financed a news site, news click, that sprinkled its coverage with Chinese government talking points. Now, there's no substantiation of that assertion that it sprinkles its coverage with uh, Chinese government talking points. And even if it did, for argument's sake, that is not illegal. You may agree with the particular talking point of this or that country, including China. So that's not an offense under the law and certainly nothing to do with terrorism. And then it says, it, it refers to one so, video. So that's, that's an important point you're making. You're saying, you, you know, you're making an important point. You're saying even if Let's assume that NewsClick was putting out uh, a commentary that may be similar to what possibly China was doing. That is not a crime, A. 
Am I clear that that for you is that that to then accuse them be for uh, as sort of terrorists is even worse. So your argument is that if at all tomorrow a journalist organization has to be raided, journalists detained, you have to come up with much more solid facts, not innuendo, not hearsay, not uh, throwing mud and hoping some of it will be stick uh, will stick. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what we mean. And this is not going to stick in any court of law if there is to be justice. Because uh, there's no connection between what we know about uh, about the uh, matters alleged, matters referred to, and the charges. Uh, uh, there's, n- there's nothing there. There's no Chinese money that has come in. I know Roy, uh, Roy Singham, Neville Roy Singham. A lot of people know him. I've known him very well. He founded ThoughtWorks. And as the New York Times piece uh, article says, uh, he sold it for seven hundred, uh, apparently seven hundred eighty million dollars, uh, and put a huge part of it into nonprofits, American nonprofits, where you don't have to uh, disclose some details. And he's not registered under the Foreign Agents Registration Act because he doesn't receive money from anyone else. Is what he has made clear, and he he, he doesn't act at the direction of anyone. If he chooses, he's based in Shanghai. Roy, and if he chooses to cooperate with Chinese organizations, that's his business. And and the American law, the Constitution, that's uh, but, uh, you know he's completely clear on that. But Unless, there will be those. But let me for a moment let let me let me for a moment play devil's advocate uh, for those who will say that all of this is very dangerous to national interest. That allowing someone like Neville Roy Singham to perhaps influence editorial policies, albeit of a very small website, is dangerous. This should not be allowed. This would, uh, uh, therefore, the government is cracking down. This is not about freedom of the press. This is about national security and sovereignty. Yeah, this, will, this is used by many autocratic governments all over the world to say that national security is threatened or is this terror- these are the two things, terrorism and national security. And uh, even in Western countries, there has been uh, there have been concerns uh, about the state of free speech and uh, protection. Of course, in the U.S., there's very strong constitutional backing for uh, in the First Amendment, freedom of speech and expression. You can say many things which uh, many people would consider outrageous, and uh, yet you're fine. Uh, our law may be different, but there is nothing in the law uh, that uh, that says that any of this activity uh, comes under uh, tra- you know danger to national interests uh, or terrorism and so on. So what what they have said is there is one video. They've only pointed to one video, which I, I looked at it. It's uh, 70 years of the Chinese Revolution, which is it's uh, eulogized in that video. They they they've hosted it. Other than that, no substantiation of that. And, and then as I said, even if they did. Even, supposing they agreed with China's uh, policy on mm-hmm. climate climate change, uh, which I think is pretty close to what uh, India's policy is has been in the past, uh, that's uh, that's nothing to do. You know, the law can't be brought in on that. You may you may disagree with it. Uh, the, the government may not be happy with it, but that's uh, that's all you can do. Uh, so uh, this is and, can I, and the manner. Can yes. I therefore ask you in conclusion? Can I ask you in? Can I ask you in conclusion, what would be your one piece of advice to the Modi government and to journalist organizations? Should How should they respond to what you've seen happen in the last 24 hours, both the Modi government and journalist organizations? Journalist organizations should express solidarity, total solidarity with NewsClick and all the journalists who, who uh, I think uh, maybe 50 people is what I've read in the reports uh, uh, in this. They should come all out, set their differences with news click or views espoused by this or that journalist aside, and uh, unite on this question, which I think is it's what they're going to do. I hope the Editors Guild of India, you used to be the president, uh, uh, comes out uh, clearly. It has come out in the past also clearly on this. And the Press Club of De- India is all in Delhi has also come out. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have much hope from the Press Council of India these days. So they should come out to strongly protest, express their solidarity in various ways, mm-hmm. lawful ways. Mm-hmm. As for the Modi government, it's best to learn lessons from it because they're getting a very bad name all over the world because of this. Wherever freedom is valued, freedom of the press, they're getting a very bad name 
India's reputation. That's what national interest requires. The national interest requires, uh, river, you know, going back on this, reversing tra uh, track and withdrawing all this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, the, I mean, the damage is limited for itself. Because this is not going to uh, suppress... Uh, if, if the government... If, if the government, though, if the government, Mr. Ram, if the government, Mr. Ram says that we are following due process of law, please hold your horses till the investigation is complete. What would you say? There are many illegal things that the uh, special uh, cell, the Delhi Police special cell, is reported to have done, taken away devices without giving receipts or copies to them. Uh, often, they, you know, they don't return them for a year or two or many, many months. Uh, this is complete uh, lawlessness. If you snatch somebody's uh, devices, their uh, their personal details, you just go to their homes, not the offices, even junior staff. This is completely lawless. And uh, so the, you wonder sometimes what is the purpose of this? Because it's uh, does it make any sense? It's completely over the top what they're doing. Is it to send some message to others? That's the question that's got to be raised. Right. So it's a lawless process, and this should be challenged also in courts. And if I think, uh, right. if this is to have any meaning, this aspect will also have to be looked at, the, the procedure resorted to in this case. That has to be challenged using the best legal minds in the country. Right. I would appeal to lawyers to come forward. The best I know... Uh, Mr. Fali Nariman and others have spoken on the state of freedom and many others as well, Sadushyan, so Dave, and so on. I think the lawyers should come out and support uh, uh, the, the, uh, the media and the, particularly the journalists concerned, offer their services pro bono. Many of them do. I know many of them do, Prashant Bhushan and others. And so I think uh, we, we expect this from uh, uh, the, the community that, uh, that represents the law. Right. Let me leave it there. Let me leave it there, uh, N. Ram. You've spoken very strongly and very clearly, and I hope there are people out there listening that the worst thing you can do for a nation's image globally is to be seen to be cracking down on the media. Then your very con the very concept of democracy as we know it comes under threat. Thank you very much, N. Ram, for speaking your mind. Thank you, Rajdeep.